Well, today on WCR Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, get your hate mail ready because we're talking about window cleaning is just not that important. It's just not. So either way, hang out, have some fun today. This is WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Have a look around if it's your first time. There's better episodes. Better episodes back there. 160 episodes to catch up on each 30 minutes long. And we've been doing this for 160 straight weeks, so you got a lot of content to catch up on. Uh, And if it isn't your first time, I just want to say, what's up? Thanks for always tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for thumbsing up the video if you're on YouTube, commenting, and most importantly, thanks for ordering through me. My uh, shameless pitch every single week is if you'd love to put your orders in through me, I would love it. I hope you would. 862-312-2026 is my number. That's a cell phone. You can put it all in your cart. Be like, yo, Jersey, my cart's full. Put it in. That's it. Text me it. And I put that in. It gives me credit, which is like a super awesome virtual high five of awesomeness. And it doesn't cost you any extra. In fact, it could be even easier than normally ordering if I put that in for you. Big or small orders, it really doesn't matter. 862-312-2026. That's how I make my cheddar, man. Make sure to order from me. I'd definitely appreciate it. A couple of quick shout outs today. I want to say what's up to Jeff Housing oh, Jeff Hosington. I'm Hosington. Anyway, probably butchered your name, Jeff. Sorry. Alberto Gonzalez. Uh, what's up, man? And of course, Sean Wood. What's up? Uh, by the way, every single week, I think it's tradition that my brain screws someone's name up. If your name is John Smith, please put an order in with me. I would love to put you in the mix um, and not screw your name up. But either way, thanks to you guys who uh, order. Of course, those are just a couple of them. Uh, A couple of the awesome nation, the cool kids. Thank you very, very much. Uh, But today we're talking about uh, cleaning windows isn't that important. And I've said this before. I've talked about it on forums and other things, and people tend to not get angry. They do get angry. Here's what I hope. I hope that this conversation that we have today explains something to you and changes your mindset, changes your thinking. Because a lot of us are thinking about what we do way wrong. And I'll give you kind of an example. In window cleaning, just like anything else, we focus on the service as being done, not the company. And in your brain, you're like, yeah, that's what you should be doing, right? Think about all the people that have been online. and like I've asked this question a hundred times, which by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, answer this question for me because I haven't, I've gotten maybe one or two really good answers and the rest of them are really pretty bad. But answer me this, and it doesn't have to be good. I just want to know what your thoughts are. What's your unique selling point? What is your USP? Why do I choose you over the next guy? Put it down in the comments on YouTube. I'd love to hear. Plus, give the video a thumbs up because, you know, YouTubes. Uh, But uh, here's a lot of the answers. People, I clean the best window. My windows are the cleanest. I blah, 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 blah. No one cares. Like, here's the thing. Think about it in another industry. If I hire somebody to mow my lawn or a plumber, right? If I hire a plumber, what do you look for? The cheapest. Because in your brain, all plumbers are the same. If I'm calling a plumber because I got a clogged drain, guess what's going to happen no matter what plumber I call? My drain is going to be cleared. If I have a, you know, if I'm paying somebody to do my lawn because I don't have the time, what am I paying for? No matter who does it, my lawn's going to get cut. Yeah, maybe somebody will go a little bit more in depth or somebody won't or somebody a bit cheaper. But I'm getting my lawn cut. I don't care that you use, you know, the better equipment as a lawn care company. I don't care that you sharpen your blades daily. I don't care that you cut the best lawn and it's the, my lawn is getting cut. My drain is getting unclogged, right? That's the universal. And sometimes we focus way too much on that. We go, well, nobody cleans a window like me. I mean, I get in there with a toothbrush. No one cares. No one cares. You think they care. They don't. And I'm going to tell you why. 
When somebody's cleaning the windows, it's the universal. It's already expected before you've ever done work that the window will be then clean. People look through glass, always. They always look through glass. As soon as they look at the glass, that's when you get a call and say, whoa, my windows are dirty. That's why we get calls after six months or a year, or in some cases, 15 years. Because that person stopped looking through their window and looked at their window. And I'm telling you, that's what people do. Our job is to always look at the window. We never look through a window, otherwise we're just not doing our job. So a lot of times we see little things. We see specks or flecks or or corners or anything. We see a lot more and we try to get it up to a certain level that we would be happy with. When, just like always, we are not our target market. We're not cleaning window cleaners' windows. We're cleaning somebody's windows who looks in the backyard, looks at the mountain view, looks into the forest, looks at their neighbor's house, lets the light in, whatever their reason for looking through a window. That's what they look at. I've been to jobs before where you show up and they're like, yeah, last time I bought this house like 15 years ago now, I didn't clean them. So I imagine they were clean before I bought it. Okay. Minimally, they haven't had their windows clean in 15 years. That person does not care to look through the windows. It's taken too long. Now they notice, right? Those ones are always going to take longer. I get it. But if that doesn't right there prove people don't care like we care, I don't know what will. And sometimes we focus on the cleaning side of it too much. The cleaning is what we do, but the business is what we have. The business is what makes us the money. Business is what books us the jobs. What keeps people happy is the business. I'm telling you, people do not call you back solely on the fact that you clean a good window. They don't. Because so does the other guy they've never used. In their brain, it's it's the unspoken. It's the expected. It's going to be a clean window. Clean is a universal term. Clean is a universal term. Think about that. If you were to sweep your front hall or whatever, wherever you got hard floor, you swept it. When you're done sweeping, it's going to be clean. Right? If you see something and you sweep everything and there's still a ball of dog hair, it's not clean. But the assumption on a clean floor is it's clean. There's just one definition. It's a yes or no. It's clean or not clean. That's how windows are. They're clean or not clean. There is no higher grade of cleaning, right? So a lot of us focus on that, and that's kind of an error. Because when you focus on something nobody else cares about, and you think they care about it, that's where your main focus goes. That's where everything goes. And some people push that as, that's why people hire me. I, I, I'm the most detail-oriented. Nope, they don't care. Because the people they haven't even used assume that they're just as detail-oriented. Nobody's following you. Nobody knows that you used a, a toothbrush on the corner of every sill every time because you never know. Or Now, I'm not telling you to do crappy work. Obviously, like I said, clean is a yes or no. It's clean or it's not. So if you're not cleaning windows, it's not going to look good. They're going to know that they're not clean. But a lot of us focus the wrong, wrong side of it. I'll give you kind of another example of focusing kind of on this wrong side here. If you've ever bought any type of Apple product, which I have Apple, I'm recording on an Apple computer with another Apple computer behind that. I got another Apple computer right next to it. I have AirPods. I have an iPad Pro plugged in. Like, unfortunately, I'm an Apple guy. I'm not totally in love with Apple, but uh, they all work well together and uh, it makes my life easy. When you buy something from Apple, is it the experience? of buying something that contributes to that? Or is it just the product? Because we've all bought things from China or from wherever and you open it up and it's a brown box with black printing and you know, everything's kind of just like that crappy, like, you know, really hard plastically wrapped, you know, shrink wrapped and it's just like, you open it and you're like, oh, this feels cheap. But think about opening up any Apple products. They put so much R&D into the experience. The box is thicker than any other box you've ever had. The tolerances on the box when you open a new iPhone, right? Just pulls right off, it's just so smooth. The feel on it is a satin, right? 
It's all bright white with the logo right there in the middle. No words to jumble it off. There's nothing about Made in China right there on the front. It is a white box. Clean and pristine. Corners are crisp. You don't even see the wrapping on the box because they put it and hide it. When you open it up, you get that new phone, what happens? There's that plastic sheet on there, right? What do you do? You peel the sheet off, right? Everything's shiny. The parts that are shiny are supposed to be shiny. It's all right there. And the phone sits inside of a little uh, cutout part. All the cords and papers are all hidden. All you see is the phone. All you see is the thing you bought. Think about that. When you buy something, it's just as much for the experience as it is for the product. The experience of buying it makes you want to buy another Apple product. It's the reason people wait in line. It's the reason that YouTube videos, some of the biggest YouTubers are people who just open things. Reveals. People love watching all. Oh, I'm going to open this box. Look at this. Oh, man. Look at the packaging. I wish I had it in front of me, but uh, the dry walker. I don't have the box. Dry walker. When you get it, it's printed color on all sides. It's got all that good, you know, that same color scheme going. You open it up. It's the same thing. The, the bucket on a belt sits on top. The extra pieces underneath. It's the experience. What you're doing is you're giving an experience, regardless if you think so or not. And the experience itself has to be worth exciting somebody, it has to be worth them wanting to book you again. Because they could book you or they could book the guy cheaper. They could book you or they could book the guy that they got the coupon for. They could book you or they could book the neighbor's cousin's brother's sister's aunt. But they're going to book you. Why? Not because you clean a window, because they're not looking at that. They're hiring you because of the experience you provide. So now we have to change our whole mindset on what we're doing. And it starts with first impressions. When you pull up to a job to give a bid, if you're still doing in-person bids, which by the way, I love to do it online. It is, uh, if somebody calls and they go, you know, I say, hey, it's Jersey with XYZ window cleaning. I'm going to help you. And they go, I'm just looking to get a bid. Oh, great. I could do that right now for you. I'm going to use some satellite imaging program. Uh, take a look at your thing and I'll just have a couple quick questions. Wow. Okay. I'll give everything to them there. Not only am I booking way higher because I'm not driving all the way out there. They're not calling three people. They're just boom, 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 boom. It's in their head right now. They're signing up with you. And a couple simple questions. You really can't mess much up. But if you're still doing in-person bids, or for you those who already have the job bid and you show up, the first thing they see if they're looking out the window or not is your truck roll up, anything that's exposed on your thing. So your ladders, your decals, the rims of your car, how clean it is in there, how you're presented, is your hair combed? Do you smell when you talk to them? I'm very big on and on first impressions and and um, not looking like a dumpster. I know I'm not always uh, <laughs> a student of my own thoughts because I got this stupid face hair thing going on that I'm not really a fan of. But the point is, is if you look like you made an attempt, not only do you feel good, right? You ever put on a really nice suit or just a suit? You feel like a million bucks. What happens? Your personality is there, right? You walk into a room at a wedding, boom. I'm the guy, man. Look at this. Same thing. If you show up and you even clean your ladders. We cleaned our ladders once a month. We'd pull everything off and scrub them down. Because they get gnarly. They look gross. Right? Well, my ladders are on the roof. I don't have rust on any of my trucks. I got these little bolts that are up on the ladder rack that tend to rust. And I, sand, I uh, wire brush them down. I um, prime them. And then I uh, paint them. I enamel them. And I don't like rust. I don't want rust. If I see something pulling up with rust, I go, oh, those people don't care. If your truck looks disgusting, you're disgusting. That is the translation. That's not me looking for hate mail any more than I'm already going to get. <laughs> but if you look bad, you look bad. That's a first impression. That first impression is the apple box. You got it. Boom. There's just an apple on the thing bright white box nothing else cluttering it up it's shrink wrapped perfectly the the lines to where the shrink wrapping is right around the box first impressions they're huge don't look like a dumpster first impressions that's what it is when you get to the door you know how to act right 
I talk above and beyond professional with customers before I get a feel for them because that's how I want my first impression to be. Even if they're cool and I'm talking normal later, I'm still professional right out of the gate. I'm not just myself. Because again, the way to sell is mimicking. Mimicking is a very popular sales technique where if you're talking to somebody who talks slow, you talk slow. You slow things down a little bit. Just because that's how they talk, that's how you talk. And it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, if you're talking to somebody from New York or somebody else who's, hey, uh, what are you doing? You know, they're, they're talking faster. Hey, not much, man. I'm Jersey from XYZ. I'm just, blah, blah, blah. and I'm going to talk faster because that's how they communicate. I'm translating and I'm making them feel comfortable. You're not standing right at the door. You're backed up. You know, you're doing this stuff already. I have my envelope and everything crisp and not dirty with everything in it. I got my spiel ready. I look like a million bucks. I got my name tag on. I got everything. First impressions. It's the box. After the first impressions, then you can move on to everything. You'll never get that second chance for a first impression. You just won't. First impressions are huge. You have to have that with everybody. You have to have that first impression just be a good feeling because, again, we're delivering an experience. As much as you don't think so, we're delivering an experience. Everything's an experience. I have an HVAC guy that comes to my house. Uh, I've known him for a while. I've never gotten a quote from him. He just does it because guess what? He shows up and goes, hey, man, how's things? Good. Cool. I'll get to work. Good. Won't even bother you. I know that's how he does it. I know his experience every time is relaxed and chill and he's going to explain it to me. He's going to show me all the parts. I don't care. Just get it done. That's I like that experience. I'm not going to go somewhere else. It's the same kind of concept. So a big thing that people have to do after the first impression is just be comfortable with you and your staff. There's another thing that people sometimes don't focus on is that the more comfortable somebody is with you, the more they will hire you. You're more comfortable with your friends than you are with a stranger. I'm more comfortable with my HVAC guy than I am with somebody else because I've known him. I'm not best friends with him and I don't really even see him much anymore in the past few years. He moved away to a different neighborhood, but I know of him. He was like an acquaintance kind of guy, but I feel comfortable with that. People have to feel comfortable with you because it's giving into the experience. When you meet somebody, they go like this. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Who are you? Yep. Okay. Right? By the end, you want them to have their arms down. Oh, thank you so much. Giving you handshakes. Not during COVID, but right? When somebody's comfortable with you, they're going to hire you again. Because now you're not uh, company XYZ. You're actually you. That first impression, everything you do from there is building to their comfort. Building to their comfort. It's a really big um, part. Another thing, like I was saying, is ease of use. A reason people are hiring you is because you're easy to use. There should be no extra hurdles. There should be no weird, long-winded forms because it helps you out. There should be no weird, long... Listen, I've done forms uh, for surveys and things like that. And I asked right away, hey, we got just a quick checkbox survey. Would you mind taking it? If somebody's like, oh, I'm like, oh, it's not a big deal. You don't have to. I'm not creating this big thing. Or if you put it in there, I just say, hey, there's a survey in there. If you fill it out, awesome. If not, pitch it. It's no big deal. Right? Make things easy for people. If you're like, oh, here, I'm here to do your windows. Here's this giant, you know, form. If you could fill this form, you're not being easy to use. If you're easy to use, people translate ease of use with the experience. Ease of use is comfort. It's easy to hang out with your friends. That's what you're selling. Again, experience. The ease of use in your company. Make it as easy as possible. Have everything already done, even filled out. We have a satisfaction form that all there is is a checkbox, a spot for notes, and a rating system for three. And I say, there's a satisfaction form in there. If you want to fill it out, awesome. Just tuck it in there. We won't look at it till uh, they're back at the office. Um, but it's in there. Super easy. When they look at it, it literally has, how satisfied are you? Three boxes. Would you recommend us to somebody else? Three boxes. How satisfied are you with the price? Three boxes. 
or five boxes. I don't know, whatever. Five boxes. One through five, I think. And then it just says notes. And then a checkbox at the bottom says, a checkbox that says, I am 100% satisfied. Because I want them to state that. That form takes all of five seconds to do. There's nothing extra. There's nothing big. And it gives us a little bit of feedback. And if somebody doesn't fill it out, I don't care. I've never asked for it. They don't need to give it to me. But people feel like they're doing something. Now, if I had something that said, you know, put your name and what, at the very top, there's a name and a date. We fill that out before they even get it. That way, they don't have to fill out stupid information. Ease of use. It all contributes back to the experience. Remember, one thing that we're doing is we're taking somebody's pain point and we're fixing that. We're taking a pain point and we're changing that pain point to not a pain point. I don't want to clean the windows. I hate cleaning windows. Ugh. I'd rather be golfing. Uh, we got so much to do. These windows are just uh, pain point, pain point, pain point. No one's ever like, I really like cleaning windows, but I guess my hands are tied. I got to hire someone, right? It doesn't happen that way. So we're relieving that pain point. If you're getting rid of a pain point, what's the opposite of pain? It's pleasure. If you get rid of pain, it instantly brings them pleasure, right? If you go, oh man, this house is a pig, so I got to clean it. And somebody's like, no, oh, no, you know, your spouse or, or, or you hire somebody or anybody. He's like, oh, we'll clean it. Don't worry about it. You're instantly like, oh, all right. There you go. Okay. Right? Now you're happy. You're relieving a pain point. That's what you're doing more importantly than actually making a clean window. What you're doing is giving them back their free time. That's another thing that we do that you don't really realize is that there's so much time in someone's day. The busier someone is, the less free time they have. Why? Because if you're unemployed, you got a lot of free time. If you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, you probably don't have that much time that's free in a normal day. You have to schedule it. You're working 10, 12 hours a day. Right? That happens. As a small business owner, we work a lot. We don't have a lot of free time until we make it. Again, that's why a lot of us go boating and, and uh, you know, uh, go to the river or the lake or the mountains or the whatever on the weekend, right? A lot of us have hobbies like that because when we do have free time, we make the best of it. Well, guess what? What if by doing something, it could give you another four, five, six hours of free time? That's what we're selling. Because remember, if you're talking to a homeowner who's going to be doing their own windows, it's going to take them five or six hours, even if it takes you one or two. Always it'll take them. They won't be happy with it. You're giving them back their free time. You're the reason they get to play golf. You're the reason that they're at the lake. You're the reason that they're just out hiking with their kids. Free time. That's what we're selling. It's part of the experience. Free time. It's a relieving a pain point, which brings them pleasure You've given them free time. You've made them feel warm and fuzzy. They're comfortable with you. Look at this experience you're building. You're experiencing or creating an experience for them. You're creating a box that you open. Apple, right? It's not about the window. It's about the experience. You can't take yourself seriously. A lot of times people are like, I'm this and this and this and this and this and this. And I get it. I want to be as professional as possible. I will construe or I will um, make myself look as professional and my company as professional and corporate as it is. I want you to know that when you're here, this is the thing we do. I'm not a part-time guy. I'm not a bucket bob. That's me. That is literally how I want my company to be. I want you to understand that this is the one thing we take serious is this company and I want you to be absolutely happy. I've never told somebody, I want you to be the cleanest windows in town, right? It just it not quite works. It doesn't, doesn't really work that way. I want them to be conveyed that way. But I also don't take myself seriously when it comes to how we clean. I have what we do. I have our process down. I have our system in place. 
But I'm also not the guy who's taking 20 minutes on one window because I just, you know, there's just that little bit or there's, you know, gosh, every angle I was, oh, well, this, you know, these frames are really, I got a, you know, the seal or something on there. So I'm going to go get some alcohol and get this. I'm not that guy. And I'm telling you, until you experience that with a company, you're not that guy. I just talked to somebody just um, maybe three days, four days ago. And we're talking and talking and talking. And he goes, hey, yeah, I got to this job. And all of a sudden I realized that um, there was a fine overspray. He's like, you couldn't even see it. I don't think the homeowner even knew it was there. But now all of a sudden I got to go in. I didn't have a razor. I had a little razor. I had to go in and do every window. So this three-hour job took me five hours. You know, I'm going through and doing this. And I'm like, but you said they didn't see it? No, they didn't see it, but I saw it, you know. I mean, they were really fine, and you have to be on the outside and look in the reflection. You could see it, but okay. So you just, nothing wrong with that, by the way. A lot of people talk to me about stuff, so don't think that that's it. I'm just explaining in my head as a preface. But I don't understand the fact that then you just made half the amount of money, right? You did a job that took you X amount, and you basically doubled the time, which means you cut your pay in half. Now, instead of making $100 an hour, you only made $50 an hour. To fix something or get something in your focus that you only could see. Your customer wouldn't have seen it. It wouldn't have created any bad experience for them. You're now at their house for a really, really long time, which created a negative experience, right? You're messing around with all this little stuff, which made you grumpy, which created a bad experience. And everything is done to be the exact same that you would have done in three hours. There's a certain, a certain criteria, a certain acceptance level. Houses are always more than they are in residential or in commercial. I always am a little bit more lax in the commercial side of things than I am in the residential side. A residential pays more, but B, they're a little bit more critical. I want to make sure that they're good. I want to make sure that the next three or six months until the next cleaning, that everything looks great. But there are certain things that you just don't have to go if you're focused on too much of that. And again, if you're focused on the cleaning, you're not focused on the experience. If you remember a guy, his name was uh, Kevin Dabrowski from years ago. He was wrote a few books in window cleaning and some other things and then kind of disappeared out of the industry. But uh, he wrote that a clean window doesn't, something along the lines of, you know, the way you clean a window isn't what matters. Your business, a clean window doesn't matter in your business. It's just what we do, right? If I'm a dog poop picker upper, it doesn't matter how I pick the poop up. It just matters that I pick it up and it matters that I make a great experience. Where's my pain points? What do I want? My assumption is all that smells. I don't want you at my house longer than as fast as possible, right? It's the same thing where you talk now, a home cleaner, I maybe want them there longer because I really want my house clean. It's all in the experience itself. And maybe you're one of those that's focusing on the wrong thing. Remember, first impressions are huge to creating an experience. The comfort level of the homeowner with you and your staff goes towards the experience. The ease of use goes towards the experience. You're giving them free time, right? This all goes towards the overall experience of you. That's the part that you can improve on. You're removing a pain point, giving them free time. So either way, think about it. When you next time you're going to focus on anything, think about it, what you're doing. Is it towards the experience or is it something that you're focused on, right? And I'm telling you, you're going to have more people happy. You're going to have more people using you again. You're going to have more people telling somebody else, man, I just had the greatest. This was so awesome. I booked everything online. It was great. He confirmed everything, showed up, they cleaned, and they were out of there. It was just so nice experience. It's Apple. They opened the box. So focus on it. Don't lose sight of you running a business. You don't run a window cleaning business. You run a business. The window cleaning just happens to be the thing you're doing. Real quick on a Kurt Kempton quote. 
He said, I am a window cleaning or uh, I am a customer service company that just happens to do window cleaning. That's it. That's the quote right there. Make a t-shirt. <laughs> It's awesome. But either way, here is shameless plug time again. If you haven't ever ordered with me or if you have, dude and dudettes out there, you guys who order from me all the time, I know um, you don't have to. I really do. And I really know that it's super appreciative. I really couldn't do what I do without you guys. I couldn't live without you. Um, You make everything I do completely worth it and... uh, amazing. So thank you very much for ordering from me. If you haven't, give it a shot. I'd love to make that experience for you easy. Look at those segues, man. A professional. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my number. That's a uh, cell. So you can text me, call me. I get a ton of texts. I'm on the phone almost all day. You can hear my phone's dinging and ringing in the background. So if anything, shoot me a text instead of calling me first. Be like, yo, if you want to call, definitely do, uh, but I'm on the phone a lot, so uh, leave me a text. I'll get back to you ASAP. Um, give it a shot. This week, there's a code for 5% off also, and the code this week is going to be experience, like the Jimi Hendrix experience, but just experience. You tell me in text or on the phone, experience, and I'll get you 5% off the order. Um save it that code changes every single week please do give me um, your business i love it i'd love to earn it 862-312-2026 and most importantly check out what you're doing as your experience what are people getting as an experience with your company maybe do windows for a friend or uh, an aunt or somebody who would be able to tell you a truthful about the whole experience see what you're doing Uh, but most importantly until next week go out there and be epic